So if you don't know by now, AnyDen 2.0 is here and I've already made a video that you can click to right here to show you all of the major changes that you need to know. But today specifically, I'm gonna be talking about the Python code node change because the documentation doesn't quite work very well or actually doesn't really work at all. It's missing some things and I'm gonna show you how you can install external libraries to be used within that code node. Now, first off, what is the change? Well, the idea is that now whenever you execute code, it's gonna be executed in a more secure and performant way. And they do this with task runners. Basically what this means is instead of executing the code within the same NADEN container, it's actually going to create another task runner container. It's going to spin it up and it's going to execute the code within that container and then send that back to the maintainer so that you can then see the response on your NADEN workflow. And they're calling this the sidecar container. Now the problem is I went through this, I'm going to show you an example, and well, I went through all this and it didn't work. And after going through Discord, through NADEN Discord and just searching online, other people, lots of people are having similar issues. So I'm gonna show you exactly what I did today that actually works. And the thing is, this only works whenever you're using NADEN locally, not in the cloud. Okay, so we're going to be using NADEN locally with Docker to get this set up. So the first thing is you need to download Docker. So just go to docker.com, get started, and then just download Docker for your machine if you don't have it already. And then go, it'll go ahead and start automatically whenever you're done. Then you need to open up a project somewhere. You can just create a folder. So I'm using Cursor. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new folder. I'm gonna just call this runner. And the first thing we need is a Docker file. And they have something similar right here that I will be using. They're using version 1.121.0. We're gonna be using 2.0. So inside my runner folder, I'm gonna create a new file, call it Docker with a capital D. And then I'm just going to paste some things in. You'll have this, so you don't have to worry about this. But we're what, what we're doing is we're extending the N810 runners image. We're gonna be using 2.0.0 version, and then we're going to want to install other libraries. So YouTube DLP. So in, so today you're going to uh, be able to retrieve information using this la Python library without having to worry about keys, client IDs, or secrets, right? You don't have to log into anything. You can just get information. You can just get these videos online. Okay. And we're also install NumPy and Pandas. And what we're going to be doing is copying a JSON file that we're going to have in our project to to the Docker images. And this is going to say, we want to allow these packages to be used within our code node. So make sure you save that. And the next thing we need is we actually need to create this file. So I can actually, you can just copy this name. We're going to create another file, call that JSON file. And again, I'm copying and pasting, right? Because uh, the, what they have didn't just work 100%, right? So there's a couple things you need. You need to have this health check server port. Without this, it didn't work. So we have two task runners, right? We have one for JavaScript, okay? And then we also have one for Python, okay? This is the one we're gonna be typically, I'm gonna be using today <clears throat> um, to actually show you that it's working. Now you also need a working directory, work dir, okay? So working directory, and you can just call this home runner, right? And then you, I need this command. This is basically going to be a virtual environment with inside that's going to actually install the libraries. And then again, you need the health check server port, and then it's allowed environment variables. Okay, so I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I don't think you need all of these, but I had to test this so much that they don't tell you all of them that you need. And so I kind of keep, I kept adding until it worked. And I, some of these, I really don't think that we need, right? I'm not even actually using all of them anyways, but we'll, I'll show you that in the next file that we're gonna make. But what we do need though, is we need to make sure that we have the NA10 runners, standard library and external libraries allow, okay? This means that we want to allow these newer libraries that we want, so the YouTube download player, the, Num the NumPy and Pandas, we want to be able to use those within our code node. We want to allow that, okay? And so then you just need to add that right down here in the environment overrides as well. Then we need to create a new file. This is called docker compose.yaml. Okay, so what we need here is we're going to, uh, you can you can just copy all this, right? I'm not gonna go through every single line, but we're gonna, uh, this is gonna be the N810 image. We're using version 2.0.0. All right, these are the ports. So these are the ports that we're, that we're wanna use. And then now for the environment, okay, this is where we have N810 runners enabled. We want to have JavaScript and Python enabled. This auth token, right? You know, this is 
obviously just an example, but this auth token needs to be the same in our runner image whenever that gets, whenever we create that. And that means that whenever it sends the code over from N8 then over to the runner image to execute, we need to have this auth token be the same. Okay, so they can also can actually authenticate. All right, and I'm gonna have it in debug mode so that we can see what's actually happening. Okay, and then everything else here, I don't think it had some of the stuff, but you need to have these, right? I, again, I had to test this a lot through searching online and this is what I found worked. Okay, so now we're going to save all of this. So now the next thing is we're going to actually run this. So I'm going to open up my terminal from Cursor, wherever you are, right? Whatever terminal you wanna use. And I'm just gonna paste this command in. So this is docker compose up, build it, and dash D, it means detached, meaning that we can still do things on the same terminal. So I'm gonna press enter. And what you'll see here, you know, it's still, it's it, it's now running in the background, right? But it basically, it ran uh, Python libraries. So it, it tried to install them. You know, it copied the task runners JSON file over to, over to the container, and it should be good to go. Okay, so the only way we're gonna know is if we actually go into uh, uh, actually go into the local host for any den. But also if you have Docker updated or if Docker loaded, if you go to your Docker, then go to the dashboard. I'm gonna open this up. You can see here, right? This is called test. So I have N8 and one. Okay, this is logs. So the, the, this is the log for it here. If you've never done this before, right? So it's saying I can editor is not accessible via local host. Now you see this registered runner, this is where I, th this didn't work for so long, but now you'll see that it did work. Okay, so this is starting for the first time. So you have to set up, if you've ever done this locally, you have to set this up for the first time, uh, just whatever password, it doesn't matter. And then just kind of get through this, get through this, select these, get started. Um, you can skip that, you can send a license key, but whatever. All right, so we're gonna start from scratch, all right? Now let's go ahead, we're gonna go and test this now. So I'm going to open up, I'm going to create a new, a new workflow. So I'm going to trigger manually. And now we're just going to put in the code node. Okay. So now we see code in Python. doesn't matter. You can actually just choose it here. Okay. So now I want to just add some, add in some basic code to make sure that the libraries are actually working. Okay. So here's the code I'm importing. Now I can now import the YouTube download player library directly in within the code node. I'm also importing JSON, this is a standard library. I have this simple URL, you'll figure out what video this is. And then this is just info where I'm getting all this information, I'm gonna return the result. This actually shouldn't work just yet, and I'll explain why. So what we're gonna do is come back here, we're going to execute the workflow, and then, you know, I, lo I love this new UI. I gotta say, I love this new UI. So it's saying it works successfully. Oh, you know, I know why this did work. This is, this is actually perfectly fine. This did, I'm actually I'm happy. This, that was a different scenario. I forgot. Sorry, so many things didn't work last night. But yeah, so this has worked fine. So we returned. Um, this is Rick Astley, never going to give you up. So this it went through there, it used the YouTube download player library, and I got the title, description, duration, and all that information. And I was able to print that out right here, which is awesome. That means that we can now use external libraries within the actual code node, which I think opens up so many possibilities, in my opinion. But there are some changes. You can't use dot notation like you might think you're used to. And it, what if I want to pass in other variables into this code node? You know, typically you might think, oh, I can do something like the, uh, was it the from AI and then pass in like URL, URL. And I could like put this in, I put this like right here or something like that, right? Or, you know, if you're using an AI agent, that's incorrect, you can't. How do we do this? All right, so well, let me go back here. Let me erase this. So how do I pass in something from a previous node? It's not exactly what you think. So let me, let's me let go ahead in between this. We're gonna add a set node, and then I'm going to just put in a field, so URL. Okay, let me pass in, let me set this up with this. I'm gonna use this um, YouTube video again at the end here. Okay, so now I'm passing in Rick Astley's YouTube URL. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. So now we have the URL. Now, if I were to erase this, and I just put this right here, let's run it and see if it works. Okay, great, and it worked. It worked exactly like I had hoped that it would. Now, this is different if you're gonna be using an agent, it actually takes in something completely different if you wanna pass in something from an agent variables into a code node tool, 
that's for my next video. But this is awesome. So this means that we can now import external libraries into our code node, and then we can do anything we want with these, right? So now that you actually have like the URL, I mean, here's the thumbnail, you could convert, you could take this information, you could create an MP3 from this. You know, there's so many things you could do. There's so many other libraries that you can use now that you see that this working with external libraries. And I really think this opens up a lot of possibilities. Okay. So all of this is going to be in my school community because I think really be, I think using local any 10 is going to be a lot more powerful now. And also this will be in my GitHub that you can see below in the description. So if you haven't watched it yet, here is my video on all of the changes for any 10 2.0.